Alright, so we're back and uh, we're going to continue by fixing some of the things that we did wrong and then we're going to go down the path of modifying our models and seeing how that looks when we modify the database and the scaffolding. The first thing we're going to do is change this monstrosity here. So I forgot to change this to say uh, planets when I copied this database context from a web page. So let's go ahead and change that now. Luckily, I believe we can just do this in Visual Studio by doing this rename option up over here. And sure, preview changes. Nah, this is live dangerously. We've got Git on our backs. Git has got our backs. We are. Never mind. I don't know what I was going to say. So I think it's asking me to just type in a new value. So, planets, this is the plural, did that change everything? No, it did not. Back to the drawing board, revert, 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 jumping over here, and then I think we can just Go like that. Undo changes. Yes. Back to where we were. And build to make sure. Build succeeded. Let's try that again. Models. This guy. Right click. Rename. Renaming categories. So I guess maybe we just type it in here now while it's highlighted in green. Ah, there we go. New name planets. Apply. And then this updated planets over here. Excellent. And then let's run this to make sure that we're good. Our website came up just fine. I'm going to go ahead and add yet another planet. Jupiter. Realize I typed it in wrong. Change it back. Jupiter. And yeah, and then move that guy. Delete. Perfect. It's all working. Uh, let's commit our change. Named categories to planets like it should be. Commit all. Now we're going to go through the exercise of what happens when you change what your model looks like. So we're going to, in class, we came up with uh, adding population. So public long population get set. And let's see how that works. If I just build and run it right now. So build, run. And boom, we get an error. As it's going to read the planets, it basically goes, oh, hey, look, there's a little select statement that it generated. Let's see if we can get a zoom in on that. Uh, select planet population is population from dbo.planets, blah, blah, blah. And the error, oh, where'd my little error go? There it is. Uh, the model backing planet context context has changed since the database was created. Consider using code for migrations to update the database. So I would highly recommend you do not consider using code first migrations, at least not this first time around, uh, because it gets a little bit hairy. So instead we're going to go with a different route, which is drop the database and start over. So how do we do that? Well, here's something we could do. What if we just made the same matching change in our database? So we have a connection to the database right here. We can go into this planets, open the table definition, and add a population column. Let's put it in here, population, I think that maps to big int. And let's let be, well, the way our table's defined, it's not null, because we didn't say long question mark, we just said long. And update. Oh, 
and there is a problem with that because we're trying to add something that is uh, not nullable and we didn't supply a default value. So let's change that and try again. Cancel. Default 0. And update. Update database. And we get a green check mark. Update successfully completed. Now let's go run our code again and see what happens. Oh, we're still back at this error. All right, so that did not work. Let's try something else. Having seen this before, I know that the keywords I'm looking for are like drop create database or something like that. And hey, there is one drop create database if model changes. Let's check out what that has to say. It's a iDatabase initializer and it has no examples, but we all know what we're looking for. So let's see if Stack Overflow has anything to say about this. Well, I don't know what this guy's problem is really but I do see something along the lines of he's got an application context and he's setting this initializer to be this kind of an initializer. I know approximately where that goes so I'm going to go ahead and try it. So copy that in here add a constructor Paste the code, set the initializer, and then we copy the class names down. All right, save and build and run. And we get this error because the database is currently in use, and that's probably because I have it open here. So I should go ahead and close that and I should probably close it down from Server Explorer as well. Stop my run, go over to Server Explorer and close this connection here. Close connection. Let's try that again. Run. I'm still getting the in-use error. Oh, maybe it's that one. And the third time is the charm. Let's go see what we actually have in our database now. Go ahead and stop running. Go over to Server Explorer. Open this up again. Refresh it. And see what we got. It looks about the same to me, except that there's no default. And... There's no data because it had to drop the drop everything. Oh, well, that's nice and all, but where's our population column inside here? We should have a population here. Well, that's because we haven't regenerated the scaffolding yet. So let's go do that. To regenerate the scaffolding, I'll redo what I did to begin with. So add new scaffolded item, MVC5 controller with views. And in here, I'll rechoose the same stuff. So that's planet, planet context, all that stuff's the same. And over here, see how it figured out, hey, I already have a planets controller. So I'm going to call this one planets one controller. If you let it do that, then you end up with another controller next to your planets controller, which is somewhere down over here somewhere. That's not what you want. So instead, you change that to say, no, I really want you to go to planets controller. And hopefully this is where, was it singular? Was it plural? I don't remember. I better go check this. It was plural. Let's do that again then. Having confirmed its planet's controller, I say add. It says, do you want me to overwrite? I say yes. And it basically regenerates all of those files, the views and the controller for me. I then build and I run. And now I get my wonderful web form 
and create a new earth has I don't know eight billion population and Mars has according to Elon Musk it's zero but according to Mark Whitney Matt Whitney Mr. Whitney potatoes on Mars it's one although do our robots have life or not that could be a two or a three anyway so that's how you do a change in your model here's something to not do this is what we did wrong in class do not delete this file if you delete this file then the underlying database engine still thinks that's the right file to use but when it tries to go drop the database or whatever it can't find the file and it has a um, little bit of a coming apart so do not delete that file if you do need to drop something manually there is a way you can do it you start from here you have a connection in and you say new query you select master use master go and then you can say drop database and get the right name oh that's a hard one to type Ugh. that's another way of using master mvc there it goes autocomplete for the win and execute and it's trying, it's trying, it's trying. It's probably going to fail because we have various things open here. Close all of those guys. We still get the in use error. Maybe I can disconnect this one as well. Try that one more time. Command successfully completed. Now, if we go back to here, refresh this guy, it's gone that's the right way to drop a database. Now if we were to rerun our program, the database will be created from scratch once more because this is entity framework code first. The other topic that we failed to cover successfully in class was how to provide seed data along with your database when it gets created. So we're going to jump to that. I'm going to try my luck with a little search, see if Bing does anything for me. Maybe this one. I usually try several things at the same time and by the time some of them get loaded, by the time I've opened all of them, one of them has loaded. This looks like something that I would like. Drop creative model changes. Yes, yes, yes. Protect override seed. All right, let's give that a shot. So this is a database context initializer that is based on this class. And this part got all messed up in the paste. I can fix that about there. OK. All right, control K, control C to comment stuff out. Control K, control D to reformat things. So if I do a public override what can I override it says I can override initialize database it doesn't say I can override seed but apparently that was working just fine during class we had a problem with the initialize database call not well the seed call not working correctly so I'm going to try to recreate that. Maybe it'll work right this time, but if not, then we can go over to initialize database, which is what I was using before. Before class, that is. Okay, U to uncomment everything. Now in here, we're going to say, we're going to always make sure that Earth exists. So the way that works is con if context.first, whoa, Oh, we're passing in db context here is the name of the, the the variable. So db context dot planets dot first oh any where x x dot name equals earth
actually what we want if there are none where some of the end things called earth then db context dot planets dot add new planet name equals earth and population equals seven billion may or may not need the long in there this is a long use capital L for clarity yes sir okay so this just adds it into memory we still need to say send the changes out to the database so in context dot save changes and let's try that out first let's see if we actually have a planet named Earth already show table data and this time I got this error which is kind of interesting so let's try to I don't know disconnect and reconnect perhaps oh we haven't run the program since we deleted the, the drop the database no wonder running the program and no earth I tried it a couple of times and I could not get it to work so I'm gonna abandon ship here and try the database uh, the other override method instead all right so I figured a little bit of it out public override gives you this list to override and protected override gives you seed interesting let's try that one bring over this code here and still no earth I'm not sure what's up with this ha I figured it out I never I created a class but I never used it duh let's make this a little bit more obvious my my initializer new my initializer and cross fingers yay we're here we're at the tip break point so stepping over do we got any earths we don't have any earths add an earth save the changes and keep on going and there is our earth we edit it change it my grandson was born and then if we stop and restart this time it does find it and so it skips over that thing so it keeps our previous value around but if we were to change earth to say something else like earth 2 and then stop and restart our program it re-adds the missing earth that was not there because it had been renamed to earth 2 okay so good enough let's save this version up oh and get rid of some of that crap code and good luck